anyways, as long as you can hear me. Um, and yeah, I started off uh, very nervous, very intimidated. Um, I had been into fitness years ago, so I, um, I did have a love for fitness, but as for putting it out there for people, I wasn't sure how, um, how I was going to do with that. So since starting for about a year, I have hit Success Club every single month except for two, uh, back in November and then February of this year. And basically how I managed to do that is I followed everything Michelle would tell me to do. I showed up for every single team call. I started listening to the national wake up calls right away. And if Michelle told me to do something, I did it, <laughs> um, which I think is being coachable. Um, I made sure I was consistent every single day. Uh, I, right from the start, had a system, so I knew what messages I was sending out when. And for me, um, I find doing the same thing every day is what keeps it simple for me. So I knew I wanted to send out my friend requests first. Then I knew I wanted to message the people in my like page second. Then I knew I would do my Hey Girl mesh. So I did that every day, and then that way I knew I wasn't missing anything. Um, so that's how I sort of started out. Um, I wouldn't do videos in the beginning. Um, just now, actually, this past month, month and a half, really getting comfortable with videos, and I wouldn't even really say really comfortable, just comfortable with them. Um, I used to, like, practice for, like, 10 minutes or longer before I would do a video and then I would delete it anyway. <laughs> so, so that's something that I, if you can do it right from the start, do it. I, that, that, I mean, it's been a year. It's taken a year for me to get comfortable with doing videos. It's also been about a year that it's taken me to kind of build a team and feel comfortable holding my own team calls and Zoom calls and, and all of that. Um, but again, like Michelle always says, and Megan too, uh, I love listening and taking Megan's advice as well. The more you do it, the more consistent you are with it, the easier it becomes. So as I said, I've hit Success Club every month except two, and the one first one being November. And when I look back to November, I totally know what happened and why it happened. November was a really rough month for me. I really, I kind of fell off the wagon. I um, wasn't sure if this is what I wanted to be doing. I was feeling very discouraged. I stopped messaging people. Um, I wasn't following up with people. Um, and just not doing those vitals for even a couple days just threw me right off. And I had a really hard time getting back into it. So I really had to regroup. Um, I really had to do some personal development. I know I'd been talking to Michelle. I was talking to a lot of the other ladies in the group, um, which was very helpful and, um, sort of got myself back together and refocused back for December and got back on track. But it just, it really went to show me how just not doing those vitals for just a few days really can throw the whole month off. And I was lucky enough to come back in December and hit Success Club, but I, I wouldn't have been surprised if I didn't because I had fallen so much off the wagon. Um, and not just with the business, like with my fitness and everything too, like the eating, the fitness, like it all sort of one-on-one -on -one goes all, all together. Um, so that was the first month. And then February, I didn't hit Success Club, but it was different. Like, I, I was hustling in February. I don't know what happened there. So even though I didn't hit Success Club that month, like, I still felt good for what I'd been doing. I didn't give up. I kept pushing through every day. I, didn't, I, I kept thinking about November, what had happened in November, and I wasn't going to go back there. Um, but I just let February go and I move forward. And when I say I was hitting success club, I'm not hitting like, I'm not one of those women we hear on national wake up call that they're like, Oh, the first month I hit success club 50. No, <laughs> I'm like consistently hitting five, 10. Last month was the first month I went to 14. I think it was. Yeah. 14. So I'm not like these, these huge, huge numbers or anything like that. So what I'm doing is like I said, keeping me consistent with hitting five or, or 10. Um, so that was that. Um, 
Now I gotta look at my notes and I said I'll stumble a little here. Oh, one of the things I started with that I feel helped me right away too is I started with a like page and a support page. So I did start with both. Um, it was a little bit overwhelming in the beginning because trying to figure out different posts for both pages and I was trying to be you know original on both pages. Um, but I started ads right away, which was one way that um, got me connecting with a lot more women than just adding friends. As Michelle said, being in the local area, most of the friends or people that I knew in the area were already connected with like Michelle, Darlene, uh, Megan, Justine, Carla. Um, so that kind of, that part of my warm market was already taken up. I had my warm market, like my work friends and my family. Um, but as for the, the area that was gone, so I started ads right away and they, they worked. Um, I connected with people on that. Um, my one ad I did, I will tell you did not work. And that was the ad I was doing for my challenge groups. So I ran an ad for a while, uh, basically advertising the challenge group I was um, running. And I had a lot of likes and a lot of connections, but I didn't have one person join my challenge group. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Um, Michelle and I were talking and I felt like everything I was doing was right, the way I was messaging and that, but nothing ever happened. So I, I just stopped that ad and I, I moved on. I just didn't even worry about that. Um, so that's another thing that really worked for me was the like page and I still continue with it now. So now I have my like page, my support page and my personal page. Uh, so I'm posting on all three every day, minimum three times a day. Um, I, sometimes I aim for five, but minimum three. Um, and then what else am I doing? Hold on. Sorry. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk with you right from the start, I was talking about our um, showing up for the, um, our team calls, like this one on Saturday, um, showing up for when Michelle would send little messages on the spur of the moment, say who's, who's available uh, to talk tonight. I would make myself available in chat. And um, Super Saturdays. So I went to my first Super Saturday. Knowing the ladies in the group, but not really knowing anyone, um, I was nervous, I was scared, but I mean, they are great opportunities to go to. So if you haven't been to a Super Saturday and you're like, oh, I don't know anyone in the group, I don't want to go, I booked my own hotel room, I stayed in my own room by myself, which is wonderful. <laughs> so would you want to get away from the family, that's what you do. Uh, and I just went. And I mean, everything we learned there, I mean, it's amazing. But just getting to know all the women in the group and connecting and having a few drinks and having some snacks, that is, that's what I really enjoy. That's where I found made me grow even more than just hearing the people talk at Super Saturday. So that is sort of what I've been doing. I do work full time. I mean, I, I only have one child. Um, but she still keeps me busy. She's in activities every single night of the week, except for Thursdays during the winter. So I had to find pockets of time. Um, I get up early to do my workout. I get up between 4 and 4.30 in the morning to do my workout. I usually don't have time to message people or anyone in the morning because I'm doing my workout and I'm getting ready for work. I don't really, I, I socialize at work, but my breaks now are sending quick messages out. Um, I do the same at lunchtime. Uh, at night, I'd find pockets of time, then wait for my daughter to go home, do my messages, do my posts, do my groups, go to bed at about 11, up again at 4, 4.30 and do it again. Uh, so I do work full time, so it's, it's possible. I mean, much, a lot of you here do work full time, so we know it can be done. Um, and yeah, what else have I been doing? I think that's it. Thursday was amazing. Um, oh my gosh, I left there feeling so positive that I called in to sit to work the next day. Because <laughs> there's no way I wanted to go to a job. Some of you don't know this, I don't like my job. I didn't want to go to a job that would bring me down when I felt so positive the day before. So I said, forget it. So I stayed home. And um, I just... I was organizing. I mean, I even cleaned my desk and organized my desk here because I just felt like, okay, if I can get organized here, it'll make me, I don't know, move forward even faster. And I made notes and I um, 
that had all these plans. Um, I was talking to Megan about uh, things that are no, or as Darlene likes to call them, are not. Um, <laughs> was telling us um, one of the, the key things he was telling us to do was taking your Facebook friends list and organizing them which I didn't know you can do, but I'm excited to do this now. So this is a project I've started where you can organize them by um, type of friends, like friends you're meeting from the UK right now, or, or your new friends in June, new friends in July, new friends in April, things like that. So that's a big project I'm working on now, which I'm excited about, which will really, I think, work for me because I said I like to have that system. I like to work step by step. I like to do my messages in a certain order so I know I'm getting them done. Um, as nervous as I was to talk to him because I didn't know I was going to be talking to this person at first, Michelle, <laughs> she kind of sprung that on to Darlene and I halfway there that we were actually going to be talking to him. I just thought I was there to witness a meeting and see what it was all about. But no, I, I had to talk to this person. Um, I mean, he was so easy to talk to. He really made you feel comfortable. He really made you think. And having to say my goals to him out loud um, made it seem even more real and just gave me one more person that I was being held accountable to to work towards these goals. And knowing that's one more person that if I don't reach my goals, I have to report to. Um, and the last thing I want is to tell people I didn't reach my goals. So you bet I'm going to keep working harder and harder. So yeah, so the meeting was uh, very inspiring. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else he talked about. Do you remember, Darlene? Um, just basically where we are now, uh, sort of how we got here, what our goals are. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it. Like it, uh, our, our goals to summit and then goals to, to, for the whole year kind of thing, mm -hmm. where we want to go. So. So yeah, he, like I said, he just made you really think, um, and then he you know, started thinking, well, how are you going to reach those goals? So you can have goals, which is great, but if you don't think and take a step back and plan out how you're going to reach those goals, then you're not going to reach them. So uh, I've also been sitting down figuring out my, my goal for the end of the year is to basically drop down to work uh, and do what we call a job share. So it's kind of like part time, but I'm as it sounds like I'm sharing the job with someone else. So I need to figure out where do I need to be financially by the end of the year to be able to do this. So uh, that's sort of my next step right now is planning. So figure out where I need to be financially now, what do I need to do with Beachbody to reach that? So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm not sure what else. No, that's good, Jen. I wanna ask you questions. Do you have questions? <laughs> yes, I do. I have lots of questions. So I want to know, or I already know, but I want you to share with everyone, what was your why when you started and how has it evolved? Because I think for new coaches, um, your why is here and it's hard to imagine that even in as short a time as one year, how much it can evolve. So would you mind sharing yeah. that with everybody? No, nope, that's fine. Um, so my why, so... Just a little bit of back history. I won't give you my whole life story. Um, but I was very, uh, years ago, I was very much into fitness and I was a step and aerobic instructor. And I was at my ultimate goal weight. I was at my ultimate uh, body fat percentage. I was that person that everyone came to to have their workout plans made, their meal plans made. I was the one at work to get everyone involved in the gym and going to the gym. Uh, so I, I worked out twice a day, like I loved fitness. Uh, and then fast forward a few years, um, I basically got burnt out. Um, it started getting to be too much. It was too hard to maintain. Then I had some injuries. I had um, issues with my feet. I had carpal tunnel surgery on both my hands. And then I found the weight started coming on. Um, and I just didn't want to work out anymore. Like I was, I was done. Uh, next thing you knew, I had gone from like 103 pounds to 185 or 87, I think was my, my biggest. So I had gained a lot of weight in a very short amount of time. So then I saw Michelle starting to do all her posts and, uh, oh my God, she looked amazing. And I, I was like, I thought it was just 
wow, like she was doing so well. But at the same time, I'll admit, like, I was totally jealous. I was like, holy shit, like that used to be me. And I'm not that person anymore. And how can I do it? So I reached out to Michelle a few times and tried challenge groups. And I think the first couple I didn't even succeed at, like I dropped off right away. Then finally something clicked and I finally got through a challenge group. I think I, um, it's when I finally did hammer and chisel like that is what sort of got things going for me 21 day fix wasn't working for me and then uh, she had asked me a few times to be a coach and of course I was like no way like people aren't going to want to follow me they're not like I was embarrassed to talk to the people I used to talk to at the gym like I was thinking boy like they must be judging me like how can she be so fit and then let herself go to be at this point now in her life so I thought no way am I going to be able to coach people they're not going to want to hear what I have to say like I've done the opposite of what most people do um but then yeah so she asked again I have probably the fourth time or something and I started feeling a bit better about myself because I'd started losing the weight and I started sort of having that love of fitness again so I thought why not but the real, I guess the main thing was because I wanted to be accountable for myself. I wanted to continue with my, my weight loss journey. I wasn't thinking it was running a team. And I think I talked to Nikki about this at one point. Um, that wasn't my why in the beginning. Like I wasn't, the idea of running a team and, and you know, leading coaches was not what I was thinking about. Um, I wasn't thinking about the diamond and you know the, the retirement. I think I even said in one of my first videos, I had no intention of leaving my full-time job. I just wasn't going to be going anywhere. So my why started out basically for me, to keep me accountable uh, and talk to people again about fitness. Throughout the year, it has definitely changed. It's still, I'm still holding myself accountable. I'm still on my weight loss journey. Um, but I love running a team now. I love building the business. And now I want to um, be happy every single day. I, I, I know how miserable I've been, been for like well, 22 years of my job. <laughs> Which is a long time to be miserable, but when you're in a job that everyone tells you how good of a job it is, and you should be thankful that you have this great paying job, you stick with it. You don't leave, right? Um, but now I understand that there's a lot more to just going to a job every day and going through the motions for your paycheck. So my why has totally changed that I want to be happy every day. I want to have this passion for the job I have. Hence the reason why I called them sick on Friday, because this is where my passion is, not there. Uh, and I want to build that team. Um, do I want to be top 10 in the company? Well, not at this point. That's not one of my whys, but who knows? And like, that can change in six months. Um, but that's kind of where I am at this point in time. Yeah, thank you. I think it's so interesting how that happens, because I think when you start, it's it's almost like sometimes you're afraid to really kind of dig deep into why you've actually said yes to this. We all want accountability for sure. I think that's a, one of the biggest benefits of being a coach. Um, but I think we always shy away from wanting that financial freedom. You know, we're, we're not brave enough maybe to say, you know, I'm, I'm seeing what these other coaches are doing. Like when I started, I, I saw that Amy in her post said she had a six figure income. And even though I maybe didn't admit it to anyone else, that was intriguing to me. And I was like, okay, if that could happen for her, why couldn't it happen for me? And how could that change my life? And I think as we build more confidence, as we keep going, um, you know, month after month, we get a little bit braver and we get a little bit um, more in tune to the real reason wh why we're working so hard. Yes, we still love helping people. We still love the accountability, but there's a lot more layers to it. So I always tell my coaches, um, don't be afraid to at least admit it to yourself. You know, you don't have to shout it out on a call or anything, but it's okay to, to want to go part-time or to want to finally leave a job that um, you haven't liked for 22 years. And sometimes it takes being in this kind of environment and this support and feeling happy about what you're doing every day to even realize how that was for me. I don't think I realized how unhappy I was in my job at my business until I got into um, 
something that made me so happy every day that I wanted to jump out of bed to do instead of like stay in bed and shoot myself before I went to work, you know? So thanks for sharing that, Jen. The one thing about Jen, like when I'm listening to her talk, and of course we've been very close throughout the last year, is Jen has resilience. This has not been easy for Jen. I will tell you, there have been months that I have said to Terry, I don't know. I just, she's doing everything right. I, I can't figure it out. I don't know why she isn't getting, like, she's like up at midnight still. She's sending messages. I mean, she has been so resilient. This does not come fast to anyone. And for some people, it comes even a bit slower. I don't know why. I have no clue. But something that she has had is resilience and she has not been afraid to fail forward. She has had intimidate, like she's been intimidated at, like she said, videos and selfies and all that stuff going to Super Saturday. My God, I remember messaging back and forth with her on the first Super Saturday. And I, I'm very much like Jen, something like that would have sent me, I would be so nervous, but she did it. You know, she was nervous the whole time, but she did it. She, she just, decides and does it. She's resilient. If she fails, like she said, she had an ad that failed. No, no big deal. It failed. It didn't work. Course correct. Let's start something new. And that has what she has done for this whole year. And I know that's why she's been successful. It hasn't been easy. There's been some really down times, even in her own personal journey, weight loss journey, you know, like we all have those times. It's the same thing in your business, but she's always figured out a way to just course correct and keep going. And at the end of all of that, it's her um, commitment to personal development. And that is something that Jen has done from day one because I told her to. <laughs> And she has, she has immersed herself in personal development. And I, as much as I would like to say, it's been my encouragement, come on, Jen, you can do it. Like her cheerleader, that's not what it's been. It's been the fact that she has filled her mind and her soul with personal development, which I don't think she did before. And that's a huge change. And that's when she gets into those darker months that have been hard. And I mean, when I say hustle, there were months that that February, she hustled more than any other coach I had. She was hustling more than me, and she still didn't get to her goal. Yet, she dug into personal development. She would say, I'm just going to go read more. I'm going to just fill myself with personal development because I'm going to do this. And that has been the difference. When I look at coaches of mine that are not as successful and want to be, that's the difference. I truly believe she's really had resilience in this. She's just dealt with the fact that it's not going to always come quickly, but she's kept doing those daily tasks every day. She's figured out a system that works and done it every single day consistently. So I'm obviously super proud of her. I, I love her story because it's, all the objections I get every single day. So I hope you've taken some notes because this is another story you can put in your back pocket. That's what we do as a team. When you're talking to people about coaching, you want to have all these stories, all of our stories. So you can pull it out and say to someone, listen, there's a woman on my team right now that is almost a diamond coach. She's almost at this amazing rank level and she works full time and she's 46 and she, you know, she still has weight to lose. She's not at her goal weight. And she also lives like 10 minutes from about every other coach on our team. And she has done it. Take these stories and make them your own, but be able to share them because you're going to, you need them. You need those stories to back up all those objections. And Jen's is one that I love because it basically combines every objection I always get myself. And I can say, well, look, you know, and she wasn't, she didn't sign up with me first. You know, she didn't get in early. You know, she didn't get in until last year because I hear that all the time too. So super proud of you, Jen. And here's another thing that you just did out of your comfort zone, another little check mark on your, uh, yeah. on your list. Now is it too early to go have a drink? Because <laughs> I need one now. Are you sweating? 
<laughs> I wasn't at first, but <laughs> you did awesome. You did awesome. Okay. Does anybody else have questions for Jen? Anybody have anything? I just have a quick question. Great call, Jen. That was uh, awesome. Um, when you talked about back to your, the friends list thing, um, is there a way to go back and figure out when you became friends with this, the per people? I was trying to separate my lists. I was trying to figure that out yesterday and I was watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos, um, hoping that there was just this secret button you can press and it would like organize them for you. And no, it doesn't look like there is. And I was talking to Megan yesterday, like it really looks like you kind of have to go in and figure out. Now, the one easy thing that I know that I was going to go to, when you go to your support page and you look at your friends, it will show you when you added them to your support page. So you can put them in order that way. Okay. So if they kind of joined your support page as they came a friend, that might be an easier, but it's going to be a lot of going back and forth and it's going to be time consuming. I'm trying to figure out how far back I should start because I've been friends with some people that like, you're going to have to, with Shel what's that Shelby? Um, so if you go to like, the, it's going to take a while, but if you actually yeah. go to their profile and it gives you an option that says like see friendship or something, that'll kick it back and it'll show you like when you guys became friends or like, but like you said, Jen, when they go in the support page, it'll show when they joined. Yeah. But if you actually want to see when you guys became friends, you can go to their profile and it'll say like see friendship or something. And then it'll like show you everything between like Elaine and X, Y, Z and, or whoever kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just probably going to be one of those projects I'm going to have to plug away with. And I don't know, it's probably easier to start with the newer people because you can see you're recently added and then, you know, I'll hopefully all the recently added are like May and June, right? So that'll be easier to start with. And then you have to figure out how far back to go or if I just start from now and move forward. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess you can just start. Yeah. That's if I can give you guys a tip <laughs> about a year ago, I decided I needed to do something like that. Now, not with lists. My, I was still pen and paper. So I went back through my messenger all the way to May 2014 and wrote down every single name. I thought that it was going to be really valuable to me and in turn all it did was waste a lot of my effing time. My suggestion and I'm just suggesting like don't I am not God here I don't know the right thing and wrong thing but I would say go back maybe a month get them in a month and then do this thus like moving forward you know, you've dealt with what you've done, what you've done, just leave it behind. Like go, you know, just be okay with what your system was. And now you're going to try something new. That time wasted with past stuff has always bit me in the ass. Cause I mean, I literally spent two full days writing everybody's name down and I I've just found this stack of papers and it did nothing like in, what happened was I got busy with the next stuff and I, like I never even went back to it really. So it was just a waste of time. Yeah. So that would be my suggestion. Like take, take what you take the last couple months that won't take very long and now start a new system. This is your new system moving forward. Yeah. It's more for like, I was thinking too, because I'm running an ad in, ad in the UK. So I kind of want to like make sure that I'm putting those people in a certain spot because I'm finding that I'm just getting them mixed in with everybody else. Yeah. And then they, you know, they like, I want to be able to like really reach out to them and support them from now until the launch. Right. So I want to like a way of like putting them somewhere. Yeah. And that's what Megan and I were talking about yesterday. Megan has a UK one and I thought great. Cause they're, I just recently started that ad. So I know they're going to be easy to find. And uh, she had a great idea too, like a, one, a list for like your dream team people that you can put in there too. So you never know, you might want to do some different posts, make sure they see your coaching posts and things like that. So, um, but yeah, it's like Michelle said, way too hard to go back to a year ago or I mean, got some friends I've been longer with, right? So yeah. Something that you just, before you do anything, you just have to ask yourself, is this moving my business forward or am I doing something so I don't have to do the stuff that makes me uncomfortable? Because I'm telling you guys, last year I got stuck in that so much. 
I would tell myself I had to make fancy slides for all my calls. I'd tell myself I had to think of a new ad. I would do this and I would do that and I would do that. And all I was doing was helping myself not invite. I was giving myself another task so I didn't have to do that invite. So if you're gonna do stuff like that, that's awesome. But make sure you've got the vitals done first. That's always gotta be first because I would do my fancy slides and then I would be out of time. Especially if you're working, you're busy, you know, everybody's always so busy, they've only got one hour or whatever, well make sure you get the things that are gonna move your business forward done before you do the extra stuff. So that's my, and I say this out of so much love because I have made that mistake. Like literally last year I wasted my whole year doing stuff like that. And now you can see there's not fancy slides. And it kills me not to have fancy slides because that's my jam. Like I would love to do that all day, but it doesn't move my business forward. It doesn't. It's, it's talking to people, talking to my coaches, talking to my customers, talking to my challengers, inviting. That's what moves my business forward. So just pieces of advice, but definitely the lists are so good. Like I, I have a dream team. I've always had a dream team one. And I go, like, you know, God, you know how I am. I'm like all spazzy all over the place. So some months I'm really good with my lists and then the next month I'm not. But it's great to have them organized somewhere that you can go find them. The UK, if you are doing any targeting to the UK, that's really important. Even in your teensy, you can tag them. You, that's what I've done is just tag them UK so I can go and search my tags and find them that way. So either way is easy. The Facebook groups are great too. Good tip. Any more questions for Jen or for me or for anyone else? All good. How's Sean Week going? Everybody loving Sean Week? <laughs> I'm not loving it either. I, I actually hate it and I'll never do it again. It's like gross. But anyways, it's good for business. It's really good for like the people. I don't know. Megan and I have the best challenge group I've ever had in my life. Like this free group, I can't even believe how many people are pushing themselves to do something they've like never done before. So I hope your groups are going well. I hope you're inviting everybody to your challenge group because that's the purpose of free groups. Free groups are not just us being nice and to give people free value. We got to like utilize the relationships that we've built in there and now take that and then don't be nervous about inviting them. If you've given them a free group, you have given them value. You should not feel uncomfortable in any way to now ask them to join you because they've, they've seen how awesome your support is. Now you can ask them and lots of them probably won't do it, but the plant or the seed has been planted. I see it time and time again. I'll, I'll have someone in a free group and then like three months later, they, they message me or we, we've stayed connected back and forth. I've always talked to them and then they're ready. So don't discount them if they, they aren't ready yet. They're still feeling everything out. But what's going to happen is in 14 days, that free trial is gone. They're not just going to be able to go to their computer or their app and get their workouts. And they're not just going to have your motivation every morning and they're not going to have your recipes or whatever. It's going to be gone. That's the thing about a free group. They get used to it. They love it. They, they love looking into the app every morning to see your face and all that stuff. And then you're gone. And then it, maybe for a couple of weeks, they're like, okay, I can do this on my own. Like I'm good, but they don't, they never do. We know the support is what makes the difference. So make sure that you're connecting and staying connected with those people and not being afraid to invite them. You're just inviting them to continue on with you. Okay. All right, guys. Michelle. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not on video today. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, I just wanted to uh, say to everyone how this Sean week has really, um, I think, given me a brand new perspective on free groups. Um, I think it's going to be a real game changer for how I do free groups kind of in the future with um, using the app and using. Uh, 
um, a, a, the all access free trial. I think if I look back at my free groups, the people that were engaged and that actually posted every day, did the challenges every day, and also um, ended up potentially being, uh, or usually being a customer down the road, they all would have signed up for a free trial. They all would have um, probably continued on. So I think that by, you know, having this Sean week was a really great eye opener for me that why should I be sending them to YouTube for a workout video for somebody that's not beach body? Like it doesn't make any freaking sense at all. Um, and if people want those workouts, it's for free. Yes. They have to give their credit card, but kind of how Michelle put it. Um, I think I'm the daily grind. I don't know where she said it, but, um, you know, we have to give free our, our information for, for everything. I signed up for honest company diapers for a free trial of that. I had to put my credit card information and cancel it. So don't, don't be shy. Like people are going to, that are going to end up being your customers. They are going to give their email. They are going to sign up for that free trial. Um, so my July group, um, I usually run a free group in July, uh, sorry, the first week of the month. I'm going to do another, I don't think I'm going to do another Sean week. I think I'm going to do um, maybe the 21 day fix because her workouts are the, the calendar is the same Monday, Monday till um, Sunday. Don't you guys know what I'm trying to say for the whole week, the, the workout, the Monday workout is the same Tuesday workout is the same. And that way they can try out that program, which is kind of our marquee kind of program. Um, and I'm going to use the app. So I would really leverage that. And I might even extend my Sean week group. I haven't decided yet. I might even extend it and then just add those new people into that group. And it's now going to become kind of my rotating free group because then all those people that were in Sean week that maybe fell off or didn't purchase, I can still maybe pique their interest again to start a new program. So I think I'm kind of toying that idea around. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but, um, Anyways, I just wanted to mention that uh, I think, you know, if you didn't run it on the app, I was super afraid that nobody was going to give me their email. And literally this and it's Sunday night before I added like 30 people into the group by using that post. Hey, I'm looking immediately for five or 10 women uh, looking to lose some weight. And I added like 30 new people that that day. So don't be afraid to use the app and utilize this format going forward. I totally agree. I, I think I said this on my grind yesterday. If you, like I had a couple coaches say, oh, I missed the boat on Sean week. There was no boat. Like <laughs> the, there's no boat. Like go do it now. You can literally right now, after we get off this call, do that post that Heidi's talking about. I'm looking for 10 or 15 women that would like to lose some weight in the next seven days, message me. Like it's so simple and you will have, and for free, make sure you put for free. Um, you'll have tons of conversations that will start immediately. A free group is not hard. Okay. You get their credit card number. All you have to do is explain it. Stop feeling so insecure about it. Be confident. It is worth giving a credit card number my god all i say is i use my voice message so they can hear my voice and i say yes you're gonna have to give your credit card number just like every other free trial you do that you've ever done in this lifetime okay we're not out to scam you we are not going to take your money on day 15 you're going to be charged but you know what because you're going to be in my support group we're going to be talking all the time I'm going to make sure if you don't want that charge on your card, it doesn't happen. I, I, I put belief into them. I make them trust me that this is, don't worry about that part. It's just something you have to do. You get their email address, you get them into that app, and then you use the challenge group guide. That is all Megan and I have used you guys. We have not done anything wild and crazy in our group. We've copied and pasted and we've engaged. We have commented on every single post. We've shouted everybody out. We've, in, we've made them believe that this is going to get them to success. We have put so much belief in these people. We have empowered them every single day with our words and our comments. 
we've taken part, you know, we've shared when we've been drinking Shakeology, we've shared when we hated the workout or loved the workout. We've just put so much love into that seven days and now it's coming back to us. They want to keep doing it. It is not too late to have a group, free group start on Monday. To be honest, if I had a little bit more time right now, I think I'd do another one. Like it was just so fun and so empowering to get to know some new people and help them, legitimately help them, help them see that they can do hard things. That has been a comment that's gone through our free, you know, our free, free group feed all week. I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe that I didn't use the modifier today. I was going to stop at 10 minutes, but I kept going. Like they are feeling empowered. Why wouldn't they want to continue? And if they don't continue right away, they're going to lose that fuel because that's what we are. We're the fuel to their fire. Hey, Michelle. I have it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's right there. Um, this brought up a question I've been thinking about and I keep forgetting to ask. So when they're, if they want to continue on, so from what, when I, ugh, I can't talk right now, from what I understand, they're going to continue on and it's the quarterly, no. Now, are, so are you suggesting that people, this is what I was wondering, cancel their free trial and then sign up with the all access challenge pack? That is like what I want them to do. That's what I was, well, that's what I was going to say to people. Like I was going to try to encourage them if they want to continue on. Well, let's still cancel your trial and then have them, because I was going to say like, I got a better deal for you. Yeah, that's basically what I've been saying. Now, if they don't want to go the challenge pack route, they can just um, upgrade to the all access pass. So there's an actual link. Is Justine on here? I don't think so. Um, she gave me the link. But so there's an actual link that they can just upgrade. So they'd click that link and they would upgrade to the all access. You don't really want anyone doing that monthly thing. I mean, it's actually more money for you but it doesn't make any sense. So what I've been telling people is, are you thinking you're going to continue? We need to chat about that because day 15 is coming and your credit card, no word of a lie, will be charged immediately. So I don't want that to happen if you don't want it. If you do want it, here's your options. This is what's going to happen. You're going to get charged $43 Canadian, 30 something American right away. And then that's going to give you your first quarter. And then you're going to be charged that same amount for the second quarter. That's fine if that's what you want to do, but here's something better. And then I explain the challenge pack and then I do give them the, the $99 all access. So if they want to do all access, we just upgrade them. I just send them the upgrade link. Hopefully they want to do the challenge pack. So we just do an online chat, cancel their trial and then get them into the challenge pack. I've actually sold a couple kickstarts. So that's something that I think we forget about and I was guilty of that. But now we've got so much like ramp up with this three day refresh. Everybody's loving this, right? So there's that kickstart all access that it's only like, like not very much more money. I don't know. It's a great deal to get it all bundled together. So make sure you're talking about that with your new challengers, how I've, done it is we've talked about the all access. They've decided that's what they want to do. And what I say is, um, I know you've probably seen on my page, I did that three day refresh. And I think it's a great way to give you a quick win when you're starting. Are you interested in just doing that gentle cleanse just to start off your program? And I've had two or three of them say, actually, yeah, I saw your befores. That would make me feel so motivated. And then I get into that. You know, sometimes motiva motivation is not going to knock on your door. But if you have a quick win, that sure is some motivation to keep going. So don't forget about the all-access kickstart package. I was listening to um, Tulin. You know, does everybody know Tulin? She's, she's awesome. And she sells only all-access kickstarts. She just... That's how she, she does the refresh all the time. She loves it. That's how she started. So she really highly encourages that challenge pack. And she said 90% of the time, that's what she sells. And it makes sense because it's that quick win for people. It gets them off the sugar, gets them off the whatever, the bad habits, right? Off the beginning. So anyway, sorry guys, this is getting long like always. Um, any other questions? Everybody feel good and pumped to head into the weekend. All right, cool guys, have a good weekend.